If you are positive that forward-facing sonar should be banned, then you are a very unintelligent individual. You can't trust anything the Missouri DNR tells you. It's trying to get clicks and views by making a million videos about it. Shouldn't be spreading false information because they weren't successful. What is up, MFers? Hope you guys had an amazing Christmas. And as we were kind of going into the new year here, I was sitting around thinking about videos this last year and some of the topics and, and, and really popular themes, of course, the big one that stands out in uh, professional bass fishing and really all of fishing is the use of live scope and forward facing sonar and is it good for the sport, is it bad for the sport, is it, how is it affecting the sport and um, man it's just been the most clickbait topic ever to get some views and I kind of realized I've never really addressed the situation on how I actually feel about it and what my thoughts are on forward facing sonar. A lot of you guys may have seen this it's crazy debate that I did uh, a couple weeks ago, and if you you missed it, it went a little bit something like this. Anglers are catching bigger and more bass in tournaments now because of the advent of live scope, and if you don't have it, you just can't compete. Actually, if you look at the statistical evidence of the top level tournaments and the local angling tournaments, weights have not increased since the advent of forward facing sonar. I talked to people at boat ramps and in my comment section that say that crappie populations and, and, and fish across the country have been decimated by forward-facing sonar as well. No, that's actually incorrect as well. After speaking with several different Department of Natural Resources from states across the country, not only did they find that black bass populations have not been affected negatively or positively from forward-facing sonar, but also crappie and catfish populations as well. You can't trust anything the Missouri DNR tells you. I've been fishing these lakes for 50 plus years and I have all the information gathered from the opinions in my comment section. The only reason we're seeing young Bassmaster Opens anglers qualify for the Elite Series is because of forward-facing sonar. Actually, 2023 was an outlier. If you look before then, there was a lot of fluctuation in the ages of the average qualifiers. I don't like that we're pricing the average working man out of the sport of bass fishing. Live scope's too expensive for the young angler to go out and purchase. I mean, you have an $80,000 plus bass boat, you promote jerk baits that cost $25 plus, and you just came out with a signature jig that's $10 a piece, so. What are we talking about here? Yeah, basically it was a big pissing match arguing facts versus opinions. And as I got feedback from that uh, that podcast debate thing from people all across the industry, including you know elite series anglers, media members and everything, uh, it was pretty obvious that um, they, they liked that facts were provided and felt the same way that I did. But then kind of going through some of the uh, the comment sections, it looked like there was a lot of people that thought I was just giving opinions as well, um, even though I, I have studies and scientific data um, to support what I was saying. Coming from the science background that I have, it's always been important to me to trust the scientific process and really go through that before forming any type of opinion. And so I wanna actually show you guys the statistical data collected from scientists when it comes to the effects, positive, negative, no effect, whatever, from forward-facing sonar and, and give you guys that information because you deserve it more so than just random opinions grabbed out of the air to support whatever agenda that you're going after. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why, according to human nature, uh, if you are positive that forward-facing sonar should be banned, then you are a very unintelligent individual. I was gonna record this video in my office, but it was a little too echoey, so it's slightly less echoey out here. And I still have my laptop, so let's get a little laptop stand here. Oh, look at that, that's perfect. Now, I think it'd be easy for someone that watched a couple of my videos or um, just got on an online internet forum message board and, and got some of the, the, the recent banter about forward-facing sonar to assume that I've only had success personally since its advent and before then, I couldn't catch fish at all. So I thought it'd be important to share that I have 90 some tournament videos that um, has been every tournament that I've filmed and fished since I started doing this YouTube thing full time, like six years ago. And I had 38 tournament videos that were prior to me putting live scope on my boat. So pretty good sample size. In those tournaments out of the 38, uh, I won 21 of those and finished in the turn in the, the money, got, got to check 36 of those 38 tournaments. So 
do with that what you will and I guess form your own opinions about that. You can watch the videos if you want to. And I say that to let you know that I personally love using forward-facing sonar. It teaches me things that I would never have known and, and never could know without it. But if it all went away for everybody, then I would still catch fish. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I enjoy using it and I don't personally see a reason after some of the data that we're going to talk about why we would stop the evolution of technology in our, our professional fishing level uh, of the sport. But um, if it did go away, I'd, I'm good with that too. I'll still catch them. Uh, I'm just saying like, the, the, the proof is there. I'm not, you know, I didn't start fishing or start fishing tournaments strictly because forward facing sonar came out. And I didn't start having success because it came out either. Okay, so like I said, spoke with employees at the Texas Parks and Wildlife, spoke with employees at the Missouri DNR, spoke with employees at the Arkansas Fish and Game Commission prior to this debate we had the other night. And I did that because it was pertinent to where I live and pertinent to um, the debate that we were having. Um, those locations. And I think those are really good areas because there's a ton of tournaments, there's a ton of data, and a ton of fishermen, I guess, to provide that data of all different species in those three states. One, some of the biggest in the country, Texas has the most fishermen, um, freshwater fishermen per capita, I believe, in the country. Now, even though members of the Texas Parks and Wildlife, the Missouri DNR, were able to tell me that they had no significant impact um positive or negative since forward facing sonar came around then and you know 2017 2018 and a lot more anglers have been using it since 2021 uh it's become a lot more mainstream obviously they didn't have any statistical um scientific research um to provide me at that time to to kind of show that it's kind of an ongoing thing with both of those those programs but the very high up people within those organizations were able to tell me that there was no significant data, but good news was Arkansas did. They've done a lot of studies and they, I'm gonna give you some of those studies for, for multiple species and, and show you what I'm talking about here. But one gentleman that works for the Arkansas Fish and Game Commission provided me with this data that's great. It's tournament results from the last 33 years. And of course the comment section and, and the shit talking from, from this old fisherman and was that all my data was was just given to me and hearsay and and whatever and, and it was just a skewed number and just talk to fishermen at the boat ramp well actually it's what they caught it's not you know what they told you they caught or how big they estimated their size of their fish no it's the actual data from from several lakes um the the most you know the the, the lakes in arkansas that have the most tournaments bass fishing tournaments and it's over a 33 year period. So the categories that have been studied in these tournaments are average weight of fish weighed in, number of fish weighed in per angler. Uh, like he says here, it's, a, it's always an underestimate since some folks just throw fish back and go home. So if, I mean, basically what that means is if you're in a tournament and you got two fish at the end of the day, then you're just like, I'm not gonna compete with that. You say, screw it. I don't wanna stand around the way in for two hours. I'm going home. Pounds per day, angler success rate, which means the percentage of participants that brought something to the scales, and angler hours to catch a fish over five pounds. So we're gonna talk about those. But let's hop in here. So this is the overall data from all the lakes that they uh, they study. So all the tournaments on the in the state of Arkansas, all of them, black bass tournaments, since 1990. So here's the first table, the angler success rate. I know some of it's kind of blurry. He sent me screenshots via text message. I kind of brightened them up and made them into some of these graphs and easier PDFs to see. But if you look at it, you know, we start back around 1990. Um, it, it's in that 70-ish percent range. Dips down a little bit in 2000, but overall, I mean, you're seeing a little bit of an increase there, but nothing crazy, especially as we look at these last five years or so when forward-facing sonar came around it didn't skyrocket. And basically what that is telling us is there isn't a larger percentage of people that are weighing fish now that couldn't weigh any fish prior to that, uh, prior to forward facing sonar. So that's um, insignificant to any type of positive or negative impacts. Now we're gonna look at pounds per day. This is the average weight um, that, that someone brought in per day as you can see, it looks like it, it really spiked up there um, in 2015. You know, this is prior to forward-facing sonar. And since the last five years or so, up, down, up, down, but nothing significant. So 
pounds per day and all the lakes has not changed from what people bring in. So angler hours per bass greater than five pounds. You can see these are huge numbers over here. Maybe you can't see because it's kind of hard to see, but 1990, 352 angler hours per bass over five pounds caught. And then you go down here, um, 2022, 300 and it looks like 49. So 384 was the average. Basically the importance of that would be that that's all the anglers in the tournament. So if it was two people on a boat, then you've both fished eight hours, 16 hours. So it, it adds all those up for the entire field and it tells you how common it was to catch a big bass and how long it averaged took to catch a big bass. And what that should tell you is basically just how many big fish are getting caught is the effect of the, uh, the tournament results going up and down and all these different catch trends. Is it skewing towards more big fish being brought in or no big fish being brought in? And if you look at that, you know, it looks like we had a huge spike in the angler hours per bass over five pounds in about 2003. And that's a bad thing actually when it comes to um, obviously people catching big bass, not a good thing. So it took substantially longer. There must've been a lot less big bass weighed in those couple years around then. There must've been some flooding or something that happened that really screwed up the big fish population. Who knows what it was? But the most important thing is, with the average being that red line across there, the last five years or so, we're not seeing the anglers catching substantially more or less bigger bass, um, big bass than ever before. And then we go down to average weight of fish. So if forward facing sonar helped you just flat out catch bigger limits of bass, which you know you think it would, then that would mean that um, this average weight per fish, since you're weighing in a five fish or a three fish limit, would also go up at that same rate. And you would really see a spike the last five years since it's advent where people, you know, we, we read all this about people had no idea those fish lived out there in the open and deep water, but now we, uh, now that they know that they're out there, people are just gonna freaking mow down the competition. And so let's look at that statistic as well. Once again, we have the same stuff we're seeing. We're seeing a gradual increase. So it looks like the Arkansas fishing game um, is doing something to make the fisheries better, or it could be just a since 1990 um, technology with whether it be you know side imaging, um, 2D down imaging, along with forward facing sonar, or just you know our hooks, our rods, our reels, our baits are so much better now. And, and are better all the time. So it looks like it's gradually gone up, but the last five years we're looking at it, it's kind of flatlined. It hasn't increased, which is kind of interesting. You think that it would go, at least it'd keep on that, that same trajectory, but it kind of looks like it's you know flattened out. So it is what it is, nothing crazy there. And then the number of fish weighed per day. You know, again, we would suggest that if it was easier to catch them with forward facing sonar, then you know people that could only catch two fish a day on average in these tournaments would be able to catch a limit or they'd be able to catch three fish per day on average. It would go up, right? Or if it was decimating populations, you know, this all goes this other direction too because the argument, you know, kind of tilts back and forth for the forward facing sonar haters that one, it's so much easier to catch fish now that you can't compete in tournaments without it because the, the catch rates have increased so much. And at the same time, they speak other, other side of their mouth and they say that, Fisheries are getting destroyed because it's so easy to catch fish now and there's no fish available to, to fishermen anymore um, that are going out there. They're, they're catching less than ever because of forward-facing sonar. And if you look at this, I mean, if you want to draw a line right there for the average fish weight per day, which is 1.91, um, nothing significant at all has happened the last five years. So that's the entirety of the 33 year study but they broke it down in several lakes. You guys are gonna see some lakes that maybe you fish, but these are four of the, uh, the, the lakes that have the most tournaments in the state. So, I mean, if you wanna just kinda of go down, here's Beaver Lake right here in Arkansas. Um, you're looking at uh, just the, the, the data over time and it looks like tournament weights have slightly gone up. The average winning tournament weights in the 14s now. And this one's wrong. It's funny that I didn't type this in. Bull Shoals, here's another one. Uh, the average tournament weights now 17 pounds to win the last three years. Uh, it has gone up from the 16 
57. But of course the last five year average from 2017 to 2022, that's gonna be higher slightly since in 1990, um, the, the average weight of the fish weren't as high. Same thing at Lake Dardanelle, although I do think it's interesting. We talked about beaver and bull shoals. Those are very highland Ozark style fisheries. Lake Dardanelle is a lot more of a shallow, um, you know, power fisherman style lake where in theory forward facing sonar wouldn't be as prevalent. You've seen the exact same trends. Um, the, the average weight to win a tournament, 15 something, and it was 16 something, 15 something before then. So not much change there. Lake Hamilton, a lot of the same. You know, 13 pounds to win. Previously, it took high 12s. Now it takes low 13s. So we're seeing the same trend as pretty much all the other trends. So statistically, what we're seeing is that forward-facing sonar over 33 years uh, and all the tournaments in, in the state of Arkansas, and I, I realize that's just one state, maybe in California or Texas or North Dakota, that forward-facing sonar has had a huge impact and so we, we don't know that, of course, if we're talking about the scientific process, we're seeing this data in a state where, you know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, uh, Texas, these are, these are states where forward facing sonar was adapted really early, especially by the crappie anglers in those, those areas. So as we scroll down, they, uh, they really outline in their, their recent, in their recent studies, what their management plan is for 2023 and beyond the next 10 years for the state and that is uh the arkansas game and fish commission continues to recognize black bass tournament fishing as a legitimate use of the resource no evidence exists to indicate that competitive fishing is reducing adult black bass abundance and abundance in arkansas waters tournament anglers must follow the same harvest restrictions as non-competitive anglers despite their higher visibility competitive anglers still represent a small percentage of the angling public again this wasn't a study they did to see how forward facing sonar has affected tournament fishing results uh it was simply showing all the data and letting us draw conclusions but most importantly they didn't have any type of statement that suggested that uh, the last five years there's been some type of huge decrease in the population or some crazy catch rates that's hurting the population anyway due to this forward facing sonar. Now what I just brought up was that crappie anglers, uh, especially tournament crappie anglers, adapted forward facing sonar earlier than bass fishing tournament anglers for the most part. And so let's talk about crappie populations. So one big argument from the forward facing sonar detractors is that other species like crappie will be decimated much, much quicker and they're already seeing the, the effects or they've heard that there's the effects negatively on the population of crappie because they're a lot more apt to just roam around out there in the open water and get caught. And honestly, someone that, that you've seen fish these, these crappies down here in Texas with forward facing sonar, it's something that concerned me or at least it drew my attention and I thought, you know, we're probably gonna see some negative impacts on these species because they're easy to catch, they're easy to target, and people that are catching them aren't doing catch and release like they do in bass tournaments. They're eating them. You know, you, you don't see many, you know, 10 to 14 inch crappie getting thrown back in the lake. People are keeping them that are out there, of course. So luckily, Arkansas also did a study about the impacts of live sonar specifically to crappie. And this was an actual study, it, it just came out here in 2022, and I'll put a link to it down below if you guys wanna check out the whole study, the whole article about the study. Basically what they did was they surveyed 700 boats with over a thousand anglers across the state of Arkansas. And they were curious in how many crappie they were catching per angler. They wanted to know how many crappie per day they were catching. They wanted to know the size of the crappie that they were catching. And they wanted to know what they were keeping, what they were releasing. And so some of the results of that study was that anglers with forward-facing sonar caught 2.4 crappie per angler. Without forward-facing sonar, they caught about 1.1 crappie per angler. So the people with forward-facing sonar were more than double effective on their catch rates per angler than people without it, which I was not surprised by that at all. I thought maybe it'd even be higher. And what they found out was anglers without forward-facing sonar brought in crappie that were slightly heavier now that's one thing that's been a detraction from forward facing sonar is that people are able to target bigger fish and especially bigger crappie specifically with that technology and so it's going to hurt the bigger fish population and it hasn't been that way at all um anglers without it actually brought in heavier fish but it wasn't anything that was significant 
to the study. And most importantly, more fish were not removed from the fishery. Forward-facing sonar anglers kept about 42% of their catches. Non-forward-facing sonar anglers kept about 64%. So the difference per the trip was only about three more fish harvested um, than people without forward-facing sonar. And so there was no significant evidence that forward-facing sonar was helping or, or hurting the crappie population. And I'm always uh, interested in the efficacy of a population. And so it also kind of opened my eyes a little bit when I kept talking to the employee that I spoke with, the Arkansas Fishing Game, that um, he said about 65% of crappie die each year. And they get replaced by the young of the year very, very quickly. So crappie reproduce extremely quickly, as a lot of people know that, that manage ponds and lakes. He said that oldest crappie that are over 12 inches that um, people are more likely to harvest, they're less effective at reproducing than smaller fish. So that's something I learned that the giant crappie um, are actually not super important to the population dynamic. Uh, anything over 12 inches are not that important, um, not as important as the smaller fish because the smaller fish reproduce much quicker. So basically, in Arkansas, at least, uh, where a place where cr crappie fishing is extremely popular, the population has not been affected in any way at all. So let's look at another study because one uh, sentiment of people that know that forward-facing sonar is bad and should be banned is that the larger fish are going to be affected drastically more than the smaller fish because you know big fish like catfish. Or, or, or paddlefish are, are so much easier to see on the screen. And because of that, people can target them and catch them substantially easier and they're big populations of so these big fish are gonna get wiped out. So there's actually been a study now that was just published here in September of 2023 about the effects of live imaging sonar on blue catfish angler success, perception, and behavior. Now, I'm not personally gonna pay the, uh, the $12 to go online and look at it because they have an abstract of this results of this survey, this, um, this study right here. So basically it, it says we organized a blue catfish angling experiment where 16 anglers used a live scope and 16 anglers did not. The experiment was followed by dissemination of a survey to measure angler experience and skill, measure perception of live imaging sonar and identify behavior patterns from groups that did and did not have access to the technology. A multivariate linear model was used to identify how live scope anglers use angling experience and self-assessed angling skill influenced fish catch. Comparisons of these perceptions and angling behavior were also evaluated between treatment groups. So basically, this isn't a huge group of anglers, but a lot was studied over a period of time with these anglers. But they didn't just study what people caught and how big the fish were, they did study catch rates, but they also studied you know, how good an angler was, their skill level with and without it, and they studied you know, how it affected how they fished and their perception of how people thought that they were catching more or less fish because of how they used the technology and where they fished because of the technology. And so I'll read the conclusion of this study here for the blue catfish. It says, results from this study suggest that the use of live imaging sonar may influence blue catfish angler perception and behavior more than catch. Basically that's telling us that the anglers might be thinking that they're catching more or less if they have the technology or don't have the technology. They might be acting a certain way uh, or, or angling a certain way because they have or don't have the technology. but it didn't impact catch near as much as it impacted those two variables, which is, I think, something that's interesting. This isn't an all-encompassing study, um, but it was a, one of the few studies that have been done, and it's about a large specimen, like a blue catfish. Okay, so to kind of conclude on this, I think it's safe to say that forward-facing sonar has not had some type of crazy negative impact on these populations of bass, crappie, and catfish that a lot of people that are, let's just say it, trying to get a lot of views and clicks with, with negative topics um, would lead you to believe. It's also not had a negative or, or positive effect on the tournament results. I'm actually gonna make a part two to this series where we talk about the effects statistically, not the opinions of 
how many people watch and I'm I talked to all these people that aren't gonna watch pro fishing anymore until they get live sonar off there um, or the idea that you can't compete at the top level if you're an angler with or without it in part two I'm going to provide the statistical analysis um, from my statistics gathered from the angler of the year of the last several years the top 20 finishes and of Mr. Ken Duke who has compiled so much data um, since the beginning of the Elite Series and other tournament circuits as well that I think is going to open some people's eyes. But, you know, like I said at the start of this video, if you are positive that live scope should be banned and you're positive that it's hurting fisheries and you're positive that you can't compete without it or if you're positive that it has had no impact on the sport of fishing since its introduction, then you are not intelligent. And I will cite the Dunning-Kruger effect as the reason for this. But basically the Dunning-Kruger effect suggests that people that are not intelligent are extremely sure of themselves. They're a lot more sure of themselves on average than people that actually are intelligent. People that are intelligent think they're actually less intelligent. And so it's this weird intersecting curve where the, the, the people that don't actually know what they're talking about are positive and the people that actually know what they're talking about are less sure of themselves because of how much they know they don't know if that makes any sense but i think it's important to, to actually learn from the past and and think about statistics instead of simply just pandering to the outspoken minority of people in your own social bubble that uh, you have adapted these same ideas um, as you and you don't understand that actually your perspective is only based on the perspective of the small group of people around you. That's why I trusted the scientific process and cited actual statistics in this video and on that shit show of a debate because it's important to, to, to know what the hell you're talking about before you just get on a soapbox and, and let's be honest, let's call it like it is, it's trying to get clicks and views by making a million videos about it. As we get into 2024 here, I think it's gonna become more important than ever uh, that we can recognize some of this. And as someone with a large platform, I think other people with large platforms shouldn't be spreading false information based on their opinions or because they weren't successful um, at something and they want to blame it on something else um, that other people are successful at using, quite simply. All right, part two, coming soon, we're gonna learn how forward-facing sonar has wrecked the sport of professional bass fishing. Let's go.